Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He that believes on the Son has everlasting life. He that believes not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. There's a way unto God, and Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. When Jesus says he's the way, there is no other way. When Jesus says he's the truth, then others must be lies. Jesus Christ is the only access that you have to the Father. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. It's plain and simple. If you want to get to heaven, you've got to do it by Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ alone. What you think, what you feel, what you can imagine is not approved of God if it does not follow by the Bible. We stand here and preach the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died and was buried according to the scriptures. We stand here and preach that Jesus is the only way that you can have eternal security in a place called heaven to be with God. If it's not Jesus Christ as, as your Savior, it's anything else, you will burn in a place called hell forever. The fact is that John 8, 44 tells us that Satan, he's the deceiver, he's the liar. He wants you to believe in anything but what God tells you to believe in. The scriptures say, for the wages of sin is death. And we're all going to die. We stand here preaching on the streets of Daytona Beach. We won't preach in a cemetery because they've already died. Once you die, there's no hope. There's no church in the cemetery. And yet, out in the world, there are churches to stand as lighthouses. There are Christians out there trying to tell you, trying to help you, show you the way to God, to Jesus Christ, our Lord. And yet, if your religion promises anything but Jesus, if your religion provides you on works, if you do this, you can please God. If you can do that, you'll help God. And the Bible says, not of works. Galatians 6, 7, at least any man should boast. Heaven's not about what you can do. Heaven's about what Jesus Christ has already done. He suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. And when you put your faith and trust in something other than Jesus Christ, it's a lie. And you are telling Jesus. Now, you may not think you are, but you are. You are telling Jesus that your religion, your means of God's approval is better than what Jesus Christ has done. And the very fact is, when we take the holidays of America, and we take Christmas, and we work ourselves to Easter, according to your traditions, we go from the baby that's in the manger, all the way to the man that's on the cross, the man Christ Jesus, that was, and is, and now approved by God, where religion is man-made. Now, those holidays, Christmas and Easter, are wrong, but they point to the God that was born a man and went to Calvary's cross because you cannot do nothing to get to heaven. The only thing you can do is the wages of sin is death, and you're great at dying, and you will die. And you're going to die. The reason why you're going to die, the wages of sin is death. For all have sinned. You are a sinner. You were born of your sins, through your parents, to your great-grandparents, go all the way back to Adam and Eve. You were born in sin. And when you are born of sin, you have a sin condition. And if you were to die in your sins, if you were to die without the Lamb of God, would take away the sin of the world, that Lamb being Jesus Christ, who is God. And God is Jesus.
Jesus Christ, if you die without that blood atonement by Jesus Christ, the blessed, the God, the only begotten of God, God himself, you will die in your sins. And in hell you'll spend all eternity trying to cleanse those sins on your own. And when I quote from the scriptures, Romans chapter 6, 23, I quote from the scriptures, I say that the wages of sin is death. Semicolon. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The only hope that you would have to pass from death to a proper, spiritual, lively, hopeful, loving, great God is only through Jesus Christ who said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Heaven is real. God is real. And so is Satan. And so is hell. If heaven is real, hell is real according to the Bible. Now there is, and there is never going to be a place called purgatory, limbo, or anything like that. The Bible speaks about an afterlife, and in the Bible there is an afterlife, and that afterlife is heaven or it's hell. There's nothing else. As much as a man is born to die, and we are all born that hear my voice, and you're born to die, and in between you have to do something with your sins. Now there are three things you can do with your sins. The proper way is to place them upon the Lamb of God, which take away the sin. That's the proper way of God. That's what God wants. That's why God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son by giving that Lamb of God which can remove and wash away your sins. Isaiah 1.18, come now, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. And for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him, that's a free will choice you have. Number one thing you can do with your sin is you can put your sins on the account of Jesus Christ, the gospel, that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's number one, and that is the number one thing you can do with your sins. Absolutely. Number two you can do with your sins, and I advise you don't, is you can put your sins in Satan. You can put your sins in Lucifer, the devil. You say, well, how do I do that? Well, let's go to John chapter 8. John chapter 8, a quote from the scripture, open the Bible. I would hate you to think I'm a TV evangelist or something like that without a Bible. Once this wind will stop doing it, John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verse 44. Now here is your second option you can do with your sins, and I advise you not to. Ye are of your father the devil. Oh. And the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. And abode not in the truth. Now wait a minute. Satan does not abide in the truth. And yet John says that Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And when we go to John chapter 8, verse 44, we see there is no truth in Satan. So when it comes to your sin condition, you're either going to put your sins on Jesus, or you're going to put your sins on the Satan or the devil. No matter if it's science or religion, you will put your faith on the one that is the truth, Jesus Christ, or you will put your sins on someone who's a liar, Satan. Number one is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Number two, put your faith and trust in Satan, the liar. And the liar is lying to you today. 2018. 
When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. Now, wait a minute. Let's look at number one again. Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. John chapter 1. The Lamb. The Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The Lamb, the way, the truth, the life. Jesus Christ. And I'm saying that the glory and honor and not as a curse. When I cry out, Jesus Christ is to his honor, to his glory. When you cry out, Jesus Christ is to a curse. But when we look at Satan, and Satan's in the Bible, the devil's in the Bible, he is, first of all, he is your father. Stop right there. He was born. It was not December 25th. 
There were no three wise men. There were not even three. Uh, the little drummer boy did not come and rap the bop, bop, bop. I know the drummer boy did not come because you have tried to hire drummer boys to sound the word of God out. Now, there is no Easter Bunny. Now, with your cell phones and the ability to take selfies, I want to see a selfie of you and Santa and Easter Bunny together. You've got to be able to get them together. And yet, I'm telling you one time, the Bible says that Jesus is coming back. Oh, glory when Jesus comes back for his bride. I would hate to have you to believe that Jesus is not God. I would hate to have you believe that God is not Jesus Christ because your magazines are lying. Your rosary, your missile are wrong in the words of Satan who is a murderer and who is a liar. And how is he a murderer? He'll put you into hell forever by his lies. That's option number two. I advise you not to do that. What's option number three? Just don't do nothing at all. That's the best way to get into hell. I'm not going to do nothing. I'm not going to believe nothing. I ain't going to do nothing. I am not going to do. That's it. There is no God. Uh, evolution, that's just perfect. that will get you to hell as quick as anybody else who's doing beads and giving money and trying to be good. Matter of fact, if you get into hell by absolutely doing nothing, you'll anger those who went to church, who were baptized, who gave money. You'll anger them more because they did more work and you did nothing to get into hell. Burn forever. Hallelujah. That's your hope. Your hope in hell is to be with the most wicked people in all the world. And your hope in hell is to be with the nicest people in all the world. There are good people in hell. The people come up to us all the time. Oh, I'm a good person. Without Jesus Christ, a good person, you'll go into hell. The Bible says there is none that doeth good. No, not one. Going against the Bible. I'm a Christian. I'm good. And you're stupid. You don't read the Bible. Shut up. Shut up. Oh, what you doing, Jesus, will never do. Shut up. You don't read your Bible. Shut up. You don't know your Bible. The Bible says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Proverbs chapter 1 says, wisdom standeth in the streets. You can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. That one, amen, glory to God, hallelujah. April 1987, I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, and I became saved by the work and the finished work and the gospel and the merit and the righteousness of Jesus Christ alone. I had nothing to do with it. And I came out of the Roman Catholic Church. I did the candles. I did the prayer in the closet. I did eat that wafer. I couldn't drink of that drink for, I don't know why the priest held that. I wasn't molested by the priest, thank God. And I did better. I drank the holy water. But I was still going to hell before April 21st, 1987. I would have died as a lost Catholic without Jesus Christ. April 21st, 1987, by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, that it is God, that is my Savior, has suffered and died on that cross according to the Scriptures, and was buried and arose again the third day according to the Scriptures, by that Jesus Christ, by that work of God, by that finished work, by that righteousness, am I saved today and preaching to you. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confessions made unto salvation. Say, what are you doing, idiot? I'm testifying of the saving grace of Jesus Christ in my work and in my life and everything I do. What's your testimony? Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. 
and there has been a battle here on Daytona Beach, and the word of God won, your music is gone, and yet the word of God is still being preached. Why don't you get down on your knees and believe on the God that has victory? Why don't you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved and get saved this afternoon? You may not have. You may not have tomorrow. What's the worldly expression? One day at a time. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Do it now because you may not have later. You're not, gar you're not guaranteed five minutes. You're not guaranteed five hours. You're not guaranteed five days, five weeks, five years. You're not guaranteed. The message that you hear today may be the last message that you ever hear again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The love of God is that he said he loves you through Jesus Christ and the finished work upon Jesus. And only Jesus. There is no religion. There is no ignoring. There is no, I don't hear you. There is no screaming against God for Jesus saves and Jesus alone saves. He that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. The wrath of God in the Bible is hell, and that's eternal. Now, the fact is that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the Scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the Scriptures. The Bible teaches that Jesus hung on that cross. He died for you, and he went into hell. I said yes. Jesus went into hell. Jesus went into hell to deposit our sins so that you may not go to hell now I don't know and I'm not trying to be funny but would it be funny if you were to got in hell and see the handwriting on the wall that says Jesus was here for you wouldn't that be an all eternal kick in your hellish pants that if Jesus wrote in hell, I was here for your sins, and you don't need to be here. Now, the fact is, if you were to go into hell today here in the gospel, you would go into hell needlessly. You would go into hell on your own merit. You would go into hell by against the preaching of the Bible. And you do not need to go into hell because we are telling you how not to go to hell, but by the saving grace of God through Jesus Christ and through Jesus Christ that is the saving grace of God. The Bible speaks about, well, if you were to make reservations at a hotel, there's a book, well, computers today, but in the old days there was a book. And you would walk up to that counter and say, hey, I made reservations in this hotel. And they would open the book and they would check your name. Yeah, okay, we got it. Room, whatever. And you see, it's almost like the same thing in, he in heaven. You approach before God and say, God, I made reservations. And God would check the book. And the Bible says what the name of that book is. It's the Lamb's Book of Life. And if you ride your bike like that, you better believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. that's registered in heaven is called the Lamb's Book of Life. And when they open that book and they see your name is in that book by Jesus Christ, written by the blood of Jesus Christ, and then you can enter into God. You can enter into heaven by Jesus Christ and only Jesus Christ who said he's the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And it's funny how the glorious message of the gospel gets so many people angry. 
I, I, I could get up here. I've been suggested to have free hamburgers. You would love that. You could have dancing girls. I could have race cars going left. But when we bring Jesus Christ and when we bring the Bible, let's turn off our ears. Let's cuss. Let's try to get rid of them. Let's try to out do his voice. Let's try everything we can get rid of, not the preacher, but get rid of Jesus. You don't want Jesus. You don't want to have anything to do with Jesus. And yet the fact is, the Bible says still, go ye all the world and preach the gospel. And the gospel is that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. And he was buried and he arose again according to the scriptures. That is the mean. That is the way that you are to die. You are to die in Christ Jesus, or you have no hope. And the Bible speaks about, about Jesus, Titus 2.13. He is the blessed hope. I hope my team wins. I hope I graduate. I hope I have another birthday. I hope I get that paycheck. I hope. And yet the blessed hope, Titus 2.13, is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is not to be taken orally. He's to be taken by faith of your heart. If man, with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And when we turn to Isaiah, let me try to turn Isaiah to win. Isaiah chapter 1. Wind is so hard. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Come now, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. You know what animal has wool? A sheep. You know what the Bible describes Jesus Christ as, as a sin offering to God? A lamb of God, the lamb of God. You know what that Passover lamb was to be that night? It was to be a lamb. Jesus Christ is the Passover. If you are Jewish here today, your Messiah has come. Your Messiah has come. Your Messiah had died in the hands of the Jewish people around 33 AD, thereabouts. Your Jewish Messiah named Jesus suffered and died on that cross. Your Jewish Messiah, three days and three nights later, proclaimed by the holy angels of Jehovah, said, He is not here, He is risen. That God, Jesus Christ of Abraham, of Isaac, of Jacob, and of David, of the throne of David, your Messiah has come. Your Messiah has died. Your Messiah has risen from the grave. Your Messiah ought to not be that Passover. Ought to be your always your Passover. To put your faith and trust on Jesus, your Messiah. He came out to his own. His own received him not. He was of Judah. He was the virgin born. He was the one that fulfilled all the prophecies of your prophets. And of that prophet that's likened unto Moses, that is Jesus Christ. That is your Messiah. That is your Passover. That is your unleavened bread without, without sin, without spot. That is the Feast of Tabernacles. Everything that Jesus Christ is, your Messiah, is everything that your feast, everything that your offers, offerings pointed to, it pointed to Jesus Christ, Jewish people, Israelites, Children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That Messiah came about 0 AD, thereabouts. He came in the realm of the Roman government. He came before Titus destroyed Jerusalem. He came in the name of the Father. He came in the name of Jesus Christ. And he suffered and he died. His brethren, for the Jewish people, to save your soul. Your Passover today can't do nothing. Your unleavened bread can't do nothing today. You have no temple. You don't go to Jerusalem three times a year. But you have access to the Father through Jesus Christ, the blessed hope. You Gentiles. You're aliens. Aliens. You have been alienated by, to God and by God not being Jewish. 
God would build a wall around you. He would give you no access. But yet, when the time fulfilled, Jesus Christ came, born of a woman, without man, the virgin birth, came of the seed of God by that Holy Spirit, was born in a place called Bethlehem. Mary, being a sinner, brought on the eighth day, brought the turtle doves. <clears throat> Mary brought the turtle doves to say, Mr. Priest, I'm, a law, I'm in the law, I'm under the law, and I'm a sinner. Here are my turtle doves. So if Mary announced that she was a sinner, she sure can't save your soul. Matter of fact, you know what Mary said in the Gospel of John chapter 4, I believe, three, three, 2 or 4? 2. You know, you know what Mary said in John chapter 2? Whatever my son saith, do it. And Jesus said, believe on him. Nowhere did he ever say his mother. Matter of fact, he would say woman. Very few times did he ever address her as his mother, but woman. Listen, the wages of sin is death, people. It's coming. And you don't know when. What if that next branch fell off the tree and caught you on the head and killed you? What if one of these drivers took a right-hand turn in the opposition of NASCAR. What if they took a right-hand turn right into you? And you died. Where would you be? What if somebody amongst us right now pulled out a gun and started firing? Oh, that, that's, that doesn't happen, does it? No one pulls out guns and starts killing anybody. That doesn't happen. That's only in the television, I guess. And yet, it could happen right now. You could have inside your body right now a little clot working its way to your brain. Right now, your lungs may say, I'm done breathing. You can do all the exercising you want to do, but if God says your time's coming to an end, you better listen to that preacher, and you better believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. going to die. And it, your options are, again, it's Jesus Christ. Take it. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Take it. Believe on it. Put your hope, put your faith on Jesus Christ. Or you can put your work on Satan. The devil.
Bible Baptist Church in the land? Oh, the land. Okay. okay. Yep. The big one over there? No. The uh, one with the, where I go James to. James Knox? What, what street? What street are you on? Oh, yeah, it's it's on in there. Um, Glenwood Drive. Glenwood. I was going to say Woodland. I know that. That's where it comes off with uh, Grand Glenwood. Connecticut. Arthur? No, New London County. New London? Ah, that's the something. Yep. Yeah, the something. Yep. That's me. I, I, I used to work in General Dynamics. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm a psychologist retired from the state of New Jersey Department of Corrections. And I'm uh, going down to the welfare worker and I went to the uh, Sansing Court as a probation officer for a couple of years in New Jersey. And then I went into the Navy and then I came back and went back to the New York College of St. Paul University at the South Orange in Jersey. And then I just came out here to the country. Anyway, good luck to you. I hope you get the I wish I had some. I used to have tracks with me. I don't have anything. I'm out taking a ride. I heard that. All right, track tracks if you want to refill. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll pass them out. Sure, 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 okay. I got others, too. Our, we go to Gideon's. Ours are printed up by Gideon's, yeah. but it doesn't matter who, you know. Yep. I'm just saying, these are, all right, I'll get some good ideas. Ah, oh, this is, yeah, 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 okay. I don't want to, you know, <laughs> I don't, good, you can get some miles, and I, I like it. Um, you guys get out to the racetrack? We yeah. Go to the, yeah. Okay. We go, well, this year, last year, we've been right where the sign is, where the, the pollution hall. Oh, okay. Uh, Midway and IBS, but we may have to change location. It's dead this year for there. When we go to, uh, we were at the track when they had the 500 uh, at Bill, Bill France. Uh, uh, and Clyde Mars, yeah. right by the, there's a shell okay. station there. That's where you want to go, right there. That's what I was thinking about, yeah. That's where you want to go. That's yep. where the church members are. Well, the Sunoco station. Yeah. Sunoco, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. What did I say? Shell station? Yeah. I yeah, you've probably yeah. seen other members yeah. of our church holding signs, Jesus saves signs. Not at this, not not for the 500. I didn't see anybody that's there. That's where, um, they're at the bridge. You guys that's might where, have been the bridge. That's where Jerry is. Jerry is there, too. Jerry Pendry? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Je <laughs> Jerry. Yeah. I know Jerry Pendry. We yeah. sing in the choir together. Yeah, we there know we, Jerry. See, now we got established here. Yeah, yeah tell him you met Stiley and Tracy and Rachel. Right uh, the farmer's uh, market. Put a name. Here, wait, wait. He'll wait, know who we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah but just put, put right you down. You have the card. Just say Stiley. I'll remember that. Okay. I'm the smart guy, but if it's not written down. Yeah, we yes. gave you his card. Oh, yes. Okay. All right. All right. God bless yeah. you. Have a good day yeah. now. When you see him, tell Claudette and Jerry we say hi. Okay. okay. Right, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's got a lot of footage. Right. We were, uh, I was at God's table last night at the church. I figured they'd be there, but but uh, for some reason, Jerry's got food problems. Yeah, we know. Yeah. That's what we've been praying for. Okay. God bless you. All right. Have a good day now. All right. Shopping, looking around. Things are good, things are great, things are wonderful. But that doesn't go on forever. Life is not good. Go a little west up here where the hospital is. How many floors? Go a little north, there's another hospital. There are graveyards. There are homeless vets who have served our military living out in this cold weather without food, without hope, without the government. You don't know what tragic event can happen at any moment. 
You don't know what that phone call is going to be about. You don't know that moment when you open your child's bedroom door and what you're going to find. And yet one event that's going to happen to all living people is you will die. And that tragic moment that when you close your eyes and Luke 16 says, and you open them in hell, and you realize at that moment that what that preacher is preaching is truth from the Bible. Jesus said, I am the truth. Listen, people, I am quoting from a King James 1611 Bible. You can take my you can take my opinions and you can treat them as armpits and you can clean it. But you're not gonna clean what the Bible says. The Bible is to clean you by the blood of Jesus Christ. And what I'm going to tell you is that when you are living and you will die, that's a true fact. Medical health insurance, the health organization, is not going to have you live forever. If anybody says or anybody reaches to that point, they are lying. Remember John 8, 44? You know why the health company wants to keep you alive longer? So you can pay their bill. The longer you live, the more money they get. And then they, they will die. All will die. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Again, I can point out millions of religions. They are a dime a dozen plus shipping and handling. If you send me this money, I'll just fill in the garbage. And God never prescribed a religion. God never said Baptists are going to heaven. As a matter of fact, if you were to take a roll call in heaven today, there are no Baptists in heaven. There are no Catholics in heaven. There are no Jehovah Witnesses in heaven. And fill in the blank, whatever you believe, there are no people of that group and organization in heaven. There are Christians, no matter what denomination, if no denomination, there are Christians in heaven, and the Christian definition of the Bible is one that has been newly born, born again, and have put their faith and trust on the finished work of Jesus Christ minus nothing. Now, you can't get saved if you kill somebody. You can't get saved if you eat Jesus. You can't save, get saved by how much money you get. You cannot get saved by how many magazines you pass out. You can't get saved by being a good person. Those are all lies. And John 8, 44 says Satan is that liar. So when Jesus says, I'm the truth, the opposition is found in John 8, where Satan is the liar and the father of lies. Now, isn't that interesting, that father of lies, and that's one of them titles. God does not want to be alone in heaven. He created us. And let me go to the Bible. Let me open the Bible in Revelation chapter 4. And let's see why we were created. Why am I here? I got the answer. As soon as the wind stops messing with my Bible. I'm turning there. Bear with me. Okay. Now, let me turn this up for a minute. Now, if you got a question, here's the question. Why am I here? 
Have you ever asked yourself, why am I here? You don't think you're lucky star. Why am I here is found in the book of Revelation, chapter 4. Chapter 4, verse 11, why I am here. Sorry, the wind keeps blowing my pages. Thou art worthy, O Lord. It doesn't say thou art worthy, O Big Bang. It doesn't say thou art worthy by chance. It says thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. It's interesting, we've got a power truck here, and God is the power. For thou hast created all things. Oh, look at that, God the creator. And for thy pleasure, they are and we were created. We are here to give God glory, honor, and power. Now let me ask you a question. Glory, honor, and power. If you do not give God the glory, you have failed your mission as a created being. You sin. You die, go straight to hell. If you don't give God the glory, you have failed your mission as a created being. You are a sinner, you will die, and you'll burn in hell. And honor, if you don't give your created God, the creator, if you do not give him the honor. And let me tell you, and I'm not being in the flesh, I'm trying not to be in the flesh right now. This is very serious. But if you want to hire somebody to drown out the preaching, that's not honoring God, and that's not being a Christian. The honor of God would be, bring that Bible over here, tell all the people about the gospel, and let us give glory and praise to God. That's not happening here in Daytona Beach. You are a sinner, you will die, and you'll burn in hell. Now, we just had a guy come up and give glory and honor and praise to God. He will die. He'll be absent from the body, and he'll be present with the Lord. See the difference? With God, who is Jesus Christ, who is the life, I will die, and I'll be present with the Lord. With Satan and all his science, and all his ismisms, and all his religion, you will die, Luke chapter 16, and you'll wake up in hell. What is the lie? Anything can save your soul but Jesus. What is the truth? Only Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. And that's Jesus speaking, that's not me. Please, when I quote Jesus, don't think it's me. I'm nobody. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. I am testifying what I have already done. I have already believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. I am saved. I am knowing. And my vocal cords are praising and honoring and giving God the glory. I'm saved. I will die. I'll be absent from this body and boom, present with the Lord. Don't weep for me. You know, it's one thing I learned about Christians that die. They're much better than I am. Because at that moment, they take their last breath. Now, I've been witness to that. I've been witness to a dear loved one who's taking the last breath. And to realize at that moment they had taken their breath, they have opened them from this ugly face to Jesus Christ. And you can do that today. You can have your name put in the last book of life and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ in that final moment, that last moment, that those eyes close this world now and it can be opened to God by Jesus Christ alone. God doesn't take checks. God doesn't take cash.
He doesn't take plastic. He doesn't take science. He doesn't take religion. He doesn't take atheism. He takes the blood of Jesus Christ as payment. Cash, check, or money order. It's by the precious blood of Jesus Christ that we are saved through hope by Jesus. Not, oh, I hope I'm going to heaven. No, I want it now. And rest assured, there's nothing more lovelier than praise God with the mouth. And if you don't like it, that's tough. I enjoy it. I love preaching. You don't want to hear it? You're hearing it. I know you are. No doubt of a shadow of a doubt that you are not listening to my voice right now. I just want to give God the or the I just want to give God the honor, the glory, and the praise. I wish you would too. I wish you stop whatever you're doing, drop and believe on Jesus Christ as your Savior. Come, I will take an open Bible. I'm going to show you because I know no one's going to come. Come. I'll take an open Bible. And I will show you what God expects you to be saved. And I will not have you say anything to I truly, fully know you know what you're going to do. What have you been told? You have been told what the gospel is, that Jesus Christ suffered and died, according to the scriptures, and was buried, and arose again the third day, according to the scriptures. 